Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again today for our chapter book story time. We're continuing our series of stories that are older classic tales. So last time I read a version of Rapunzel and today I thought I would read another version of Rapunzel so that you guys could see if there are differences, if there are similarities, and kind of what happens to stories when they are retold um, and what types of information maybe um, add to or take away from what was told in the original. All right, so this is Rapunzel. This is written by Sarah Gibb um, and is based on the original story by the Brothers Grimm, just like the first one. Okay, so let us, let us see how it compares with our first reading of Rapunzel. And if you haven't heard that one yet, please, you're welcome to um, find the video that is Rapunzel uh, part one, or <laughs> the first one that I read last time. Okay, many years ago, in a beautiful country far away, there lived a young gardener and his pretty wife. They were very happy, except for one thing. They longed for a child. At last, one day, the wife found that she was going to have a baby. How could we want anything else in the world, cried her husband joyfully. But the young wife fell ill and she grew paler and sicker until it seemed that she was going to die. There's only one thing that would save me, she whispered. Oh, there's only one thing that would save me. And that is a fresh salad picked from the garden next door that I can see from our window. So is it a little bit different already? <laughs> then the young man grew very afraid. Next to their little cottage was a walled garden with beautiful trees and plants and all kinds of spring blossoms cascaded from the trees and little green leaves peeped out through the cracks between the walls. But the walls, oh, but this was an enchanted garden belonging to a witch who was so cruel that no one had ever, ever entered it and lived. Every day the young wife looked, <coughs> excuse me, looked out of her own window longingly at the sweet green leaves and every day she grew weaker. Mm. What is he to do? One night the young man could bear it no longer and he crept out of their cottage and slipped over the wall into the magic garden, cool and blue in the moonlight. Shaking, he snatched a couple of fistfuls of salad leaves and scrambled back to safety. In the morning, color came back to his wife's pale cheeks as she ate the delicious crisp leaves. She fell back on her pillow, sighing, if only I could eat that salad just once more, I would be completely well. The gardener climbed the witch's wall again that night. He was bending down to pick the leaves when suddenly a harsh voice said, so you are the thief who steals my salad. <gasps> Terrified, he fell at the witch's feet. Let me go, he cried, I did it to save my wife. And he babbled that he sh excuse me, and he babbled that the salad was a miraculous cure. The witch smiled at him cruelly. I let you live, and you can take as much salad as your wife needs, but only if you make me this promise. When the baby is born, it's mine. <gasps> Yikes. What a horrible, horrible deal or decision to make. The young man was too frightened to speak, so he simply nodded and scuttled away. When he got home, his wife was delighted with the salad, and as soon as she'd eaten it, she was completely well again. But the gardener did not tell her of his promise. He was too ashamed. Oh no, that's not gonna go well. Spring faded into summer, and at the end of that, a baby girl was born. The young husband had not forgotten about the witch, and he watched anxiously as his friends and, re and relations came to give them presents and congratulations. All of a sudden, the door flew open and in stormed the witch. 
I've come for my child, she laughed, and snatching up the baby, she whirled out of the cottage before the horrified guests could move or speak. The poor parents wept, but there was nothing they could do. The witch had vanished with their daughter. The witch called the baby Rapunzel and took her to a secret castle. Rapunzel was a pretty child, always laughing and playing, and as the years passed, she grew more and more beautiful. Her long hair was a shining waterfall of gold, and her eyes sparkled like twin stars. The witch watched her closely, noticing how even the, bir the birds of the air and the little creatures of the forest fell in love with her. Here's a close-up of the pictures. Hmm. One day, the witch took Rapunzel by the hand and led her into the forest, muttering, You're too beautiful for your own good. <gasps> Where are we going? asked Rapunzel, innocently, as the witch led her down the secret path deeper and deeper into the trees. Suddenly, they came to a clearing, and there in the middle was a tall tower with no door, just a few windows at the very top. This is your new home, said the witch gleefully. <gasps> Yikes, no one will ever find you here except me. To Rapunzel's am amazement, although the tower was as slender as a tree, inside there was room after beautiful room, lit by thousands of delicate lamps which glowed as bright as day. Right at the top of the tower was a tiny balcony, and Rapunzel's friends, the birds, who had followed her through the forest, gathered to greet her and to eat out of her hand. Can you see the pictures of the different rooms in the tower? The forest creatures were sorry for the beautiful girl locked away in the world, from the world and spent many hours playing with her as she wandered from room to room in the enchanted tower. Every morning, the witch came to visit and there were no door as there were no doors she had worked out a special system she would arrive at the tower and call out rapunzel rapunzel let down your golden hair and rapunzel would come to the edge of the tower unfasten her glorious braid and send it tumbling down to the witch below the old woman would nimbly um, scramble up the smooth side of the tower clinging to rapunzel's hair as if it were a rope then the two would have breakfast together. In this way, several years passed until eventually Rapunzel began to grow bored with her prison. She had everything she could want, and yet the days seemed to pass slowly as she sat at the top of the tower, singing sadly to herself and combing her long hair. Here is a picture of the tower. Oh, here it comes someone. Oh, yep, here comes someone into the forest. Who could it be? One morning, the son of the neighboring prince was out riding. <laughs> it was such a beautiful day that he wandered this way and that until he found himself in a part of the forest that he had never been before. All of a sudden, he heard the sound of singing, and he followed it, curious to discover who owned such a lovely voice. To his amazement, he saw a tower, and at the very top was the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. He was just about to call out to her when the bushes parted, and an old woman appeared. Something in her expression made the prince shrink back into, her tree, into the trees. And he watched as she cried out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Right away, the beautiful girl unfastened her hair and it flooded down to the old woman below, who climbed up the tower and in through the window. Ah, so that's how it is, thought the prince. He waited patiently out of sight until at last the witch had gone away. Then he went to the floor, to the foot of the tower and called out just as she had, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. And exactly as before, the beautiful girl lowered down her braid and looking up 
look holding on tightly, the young prince leapt lightly up the tower. Look at him climb. Nimbly up the tower. Rapunzel was both amazed and scared when the prince appeared, but he smiled at her in such a friendly way that he and he spoke so pleasantly that soon they were talking and laughing together as if they had always known each other. The hours flew past and all too soon it was time for the prince to slip away back to the palace. Rapunzel knew instinctively that it would be dangerous <laughs> to mention the young prince, so she said nothing when the witch reappeared the next day. But her heart was in her mouth when, as soon as she was alone again, he was at the foot of the tower calling to her to lower her hair once more. So he returned. <laughs> After that, it seemed, time seemed to pass much more swiftly for Rapunzel, as she and the prince spent longer together talking and playing with her forest friends. Soon she and the prince fell deeply in love and they began to talk about escaping. Rapunzel had thought up a clever plan. She asked the witch for some gold thread to weave a special dress. Then each day, as soon as the witch had left, she also wove a long rope that she could use to climb down the tower one day. Whenever they met, Rapunzel and the prince talked of what they would do once she'd left the tower. And it amazed Rapunzel to learn of all the strange and wonderful things that were waiting for her in the world outside. Every morning, Rapunzel could hardly wait for the, one, for the old witch to leave so that her prince could arrive. Until one day, the witch began to watch her suspiciously, puzzled at her newfound sparkle. But Rapunzel was in another world, and she didn't notice. It's strange, she mused dreamily. You take so long to climb up the tower these days. The prince almost seems to fly up to me. She told her. Uh-oh. The witch stared in stunned horror. She could hardly believe her ears. Snake, you've betrayed me, she screeched. There's no punishment good enough for you. In a terrible rage, she grabbed hold of a huge pair of scissors and hacked off Rapunzel's beautiful braid, <clears throat> tying it to the balcony of the tower. Then she drove Rapunzel out into the forest, hoping that the wild animals would attack her or that she would starve. Oh, how awful. But the forest creatures were sorry for her, for their lovely friend, and they protected her instead. They fed on her nuts. They fed her <laughs> on nuts and berries and showed her spring water to drink. Poor Rapunzel was in a daze of misery and she cried and cried. She was frightened for her prince, wondering whether the witch had hurt him and whether or not they would ever see each other again. Oh my goodness. Meanwhile, the prince, not suspecting any danger, went to the tower and called out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. And the hair fell down around him as usual. He climbed up, but there, staring at him with the most hideous expression, was the old witch gasping, grasping the other end of his dear Rapunzel's hair. What have you done to Rapunzel, he cried. Oh no. You've lost her forever, shrieked the old woman, and she pushed the young prince so hard that he fell from the tower. He tumbled down into a, a thorn bush and was so badly hurt that he could no longer see. Overcome with pain and misery, he pulled himself up and staggered into the forest with the evil witch's curse ringing in his ears. Oh, no. And there are some things different in that part of the story, aren't there? From the one that I read before. The prince hadn't gone far when he suddenly realized that he was not alone. There was a deer at his knees guiding him so that he didn't stumble into the ditches or bump into trees. Then a little bird landed on his shoulder and young foxes trotted along his other side, gently shepherding him so that he would keep to the path. Who are you? He asked. And it seemed that somehow the spirit of his dear Rapunzel was with him, helping him in his pain. In the evening, the creatures led him 
to a bed of soft moss, and in the morning they nuzzled him gently awake. The prince wandered for days in this way, more dead than alive, and still hoping against hope that he might find Rapunzel. Then one morning, while he was wandering in a fog of pain, he heard a beautiful voice singing a sad song about her lost love. It was his Rapunzel. The forest animals had led him to her. He shouted with joy and stumbled toward the sound of her voice. Rapunzel was horrified to see how badly hurt he was, and she wept to see his poor eyes. The prince lifted his hands to touch her face, and as he did, <laughs> the tears, her tears fell on his eyelids, and magically they were healed. He could see again. The two of them were so happy they could hardly find breath to tell each other. Rapunzel was alternately crying and laughing to think of everything the prince had suffered and of the wonderful future that stretched ahead of them. With the help of their forest friends, they found their way back to the prince's kingdom, where a huge feast was planned to celebrate his return. The prince and Rapunzel soon decided to turn it into a wedding feast and invited everyone from miles around. Rapunzel's parents heard of the celebration and when they saw the new princess and heard her strange story, they realized that it must be their long lost daughter. And they wept tears of pure joy that she was alive and well. As for the witch, she was so bitter and angry that she shut herself away in a gloomy castle and never showed her face in that country again. Time passed happily for Rapunzel and her prince, and every now and then they would slip away from the kingdom and into the enchanted forest to spend a sunny afternoon with the forest creatures, friends that they would never forget. The end. So did you guys listen to the things that had changed or that were different from the other story that I had read? A few things were maybe more details were given as to how the prince was blinded, right? He fell into the thorns, which wasn't explained in the other one. And oh, the princess or Rapunzel in this story was sent into the forest and in the other story was sent into a wilderness. It was desolate and far, far away, right? In this one, the forest animals helped the prince get to Rapunzel. In the other one, he was just wandering when they found each other. Right? And in the other one, she was, they were married in the tower, right? And were expecting a baby. And the, that's how the witch found out, was that she noticed that Rapunzel was pregnant. In this one, they weren't married, but Rapunzel slipped up and ended up telling her something that about the prince being there. And that's how they were found out, right? And they got married later instead of before. So interesting kind of process of how stories are told. Um, and if you know the movie Tangled, even other differences, right? Lots of different things um, happened in that one than the original story. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed it today and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.